torn asunder by conflict, where the cries of the oppressed echo through ravaged lands, a new chapter of valor and sacrifice is about to be written. This is the story of Warborn, warriors forged in the fires of a relentless struggle, shadows cast by the flickering light of freedom's flame. Two years have elapsed since the drums of war thundered across the borders of Ukraine, shaking the very foundations of international peace. As nations watch with bated breath, the battleground becomes a test of will, a clash not just of armies, but of ideologies. Amidst this chaos emerges a team, diverse in skills, unified in purpose, the embodiment of courage in the face of overwhelming odds. Episode 1, Shadows of Freedom. Chapter 1, The Merging. In the heart of the Ukrainian countryside, where the scars of battle mar the landscape, a convoy approaches. It carries more than just soldiers. It carries hope. Major Anatoly Petrov awaits, his gaze as steely as his resolve, ready to brief these warriors, these guardians of liberty. Each member a story of resilience, each name a testament to their unyielding spirit. They are the war-born. The convoy arrives at a small field unit, a flurry of activity amidst the serene backdrop of a Ukrainian countryside. Here they are greeted by Ukrainian Army Officer Major Anatoly Petrov, a man whose stern demeanor belies a deep respect for the warriors he's about to brief. He stands before them, a clipboard in hand, his eyes meeting each of theirs in turn. Welcome to Ukraine, he begins in a firm, accented English. You are here because you are the best of the best. But here you are more than soldiers. You are symbols of hope in a fight for freedom. He turns to Wyatt. Wyatt Stryker Scott from the United States. Tactical leader, a strategist with a record that speaks volumes. He nods at Wyatt, who stands a little taller at the mention of his accomplishments. Isabella Viper Turner, Britain, expert in covert operations. Your skills in intelligence gathering are unparalleled. Isabella smirks, her confidence unshaken. Eric Nordic Hansen, Scandinavia. Your discipline and strength are your greatest assets. We expect much from you. Eric nods solemnly, accepting the acknowledgement with honor. Vasil Shadow Kovalenko, our own Ukrainian hero. Your knowledge of the terrain and guerrilla tactics will be invaluable. Vasil simply nods, his eyes reflecting a lifetime of combat. Logan Moose Tremblay, Canada, your adaptability and survival skills will keep this team alive in harsh conditions. Logan grins, a hint of pride in his eyes. Ruby Outback Davis, Australia, your guerrilla warfare expertise will be key in our unconventional approach. Ruby gives a casual salute, her demeanor relaxed yet alert. Julian Phantom Dubois, France, psychological operations are your playground. We need your insight to demoralize the enemy. Julian's expression remains unreadable, but his eyes gleam with a sharp intelligence. And Hannah Falcon Schmidt, Germany, your sniper skills are legendary. We expect you to provide unmatched overwatch. Hannah nods, her gaze as sharp as her reputed aim. Major Petrov steps back, surveying the group. Your first mission is critical. We've located a key enemy communications hub. Destroying it will disrupt their operations significantly. However, it's heavily guarded and fortified. This won't be easy. Stryker steps forward. Major, do we have intel on their defenses? Petrov nods. Yes, we have aerial drone recon. Expect heavy resistance, including armored units. Also... Our intelligence suggests that they may have access to advanced Russian weaponry. Time to put our skills to the test, then, Viper remarks, her tone light, but her eyes serious. Nordic looks at the group. We strike hard, fast, and vanish before they know what hit them. Shadow adds, we'll use the terrain to our advantage. I know a route that will get us close without detection. Moose interjects, I've got some new tech from the States, drones that can provide us real-time intel and maybe even a little firepower. Outback grins. 
Sounds like my kind of party. Phantom speaks up, his voice calm but intense. I'll work on disrupting their communications further. A little chaos goes a long way. Falcon, ever the pragmatist, adds, Let's not forget about extraction. We need a solid exit strategy. Stryker looks at each member of the team. We all have our roles. Let's gear up and move out. Remember, we're not just fighting for Ukraine. We're fighting for the freedom of every person who calls this place home. As the team prepares, the air is filled with a sense of camaraderie and purpose. They are more than just soldiers. They are guardians of freedom, fighting not just a physical war, but a moral one. The team gears up, each member checking their equipment meticulously. Drones, both for surveillance and attack, are prepared. Advanced weaponry, supplied from various nations, is loaded and readied. The air is thick with determination and the unspoken knowledge of the dangers ahead. As they move out, the sun rises higher, casting long shadows across the Ukrainian landscape. The team, now a single entity, moves with precision and purpose, ready to face whatever lies ahead in their quest to disrupt and dismantle the enemy's hold. In the distance, the faint hum of a drone can be heard, a harbinger of the impending conflict. The team embarks on their perilous journey towards the enemy's stronghold, each step taking them deeper into the heart of the conflict, each moment a testament to their bravery and unwavering commitment to their cause. As the team advances towards the enemy stronghold, the landscape shifts from serene countryside to the scarred visage of a war zone. Buildings lay in ruins, and the air is thick with the acrid smell of smoke and burnt metal. Falcon leads the way, her eyes scanning the horizon through her scope, while Stryker coordinates their movements, his mind constantly analyzing and adapting to the changing environment. Viper, with her sharp wit and keener mind, checks the communication lines, ensuring constant contact with the rest of the team. All comms are clear, she reports, but let's keep chatter to a minimum. We don't want any unwanted ears listening in. Nordic his large frame, belying his agility, moves alongside Shadow, discussing in low tones the best approach to circumvent the enemy's defences. The western flank looks less fortified, Nordic suggests, pointing to a barely visible path on the digital map displayed on Moose's tablet. Shadow nods in agreement. It's riskier, but it gives us the element of surprise. We'll take it. Phantom, always one step ahead, interjects. I've set up false comms chatter. It should divert some of their forces away from our point of entry. Out back, ever vigilant, trails behind, her eyes darting to every shadow and movement. I've got our six. No surprises from behind. The team reaches a vantage point, a small hill overlooking the communications hub. It's a fortress of sorts, heavily fortified with armed guards patrolling the perimeter. Moose deploys a small reconnaissance drone, maneuvering it skillfully to get a closer look. There's our target, Moose says, pointing at the central building on the tablet screen. Heavily guarded, as expected. Looks like they've got some heavy artillery, too. Falcon adjusts her rifle, peering through the scope. I can take out the sentries on the North Tower. It'll give us a window to move in. Stryker nods. Do it. Once Falcon makes her move, we go in fast and hard. Moose, keep the drone overhead for live updates. Outback, you and Nordic take the east wing. Shadow Viper, you're with me on the main entrance. Phantom, start your psyops, make them panic. As Falcon's rifle finds its first mark, the echo of the shot barely audible, the team springs into action. Moose's drone buzzes overhead, relaying real-time images of the guards scrambling in confusion. Outback and Nordic slip through the shadows, swiftly and silently, taking down any guard that crosses their path. Shadow and Viper, with precision and speed, breach the main entrance, their weapons dispatching enemy soldiers with lethal efficiency— Inside, they find themselves in a maze of corridors and rooms, each turn bringing new dangers. 
Phantom's voice crackles over the comms, his words laced with an eerie calm. They're panicking. Some are retreating. Keep the pressure on. Stryker, leading the charge, moves with a focused fury, his weapon an extension of his will. They reach the central control room, the heart of the enemy's communications. Moose's voice comes through the comms. You've got a company of soldiers heading your way. Looks like they've called in reinforcements. Time to wrap this up, Stryker says. Shadow, plant the charges. Viper, access their systems. Let's give them a parting gift. As Viper hacks into the enemy's system, Shadow expertly places the charges around the room. The sound of approaching soldiers grows louder, their shouts and footsteps echoing through the halls. Charges set, Shadow confirms. System hacked. I've sent a nice virus their way. Their comms are going to be a mess for a while, Viper announces with a satisfied grin. Time to leave, Striker orders. Moose, guide us out. Falcon, cover our exit. The team retraces their steps, moving with urgency as the building starts to fill with enemy soldiers. Falcon, from her vantage point, picks off any soldier that comes too close, her shots precise and deadly. Moose's voice guides them through the safest path, his drone providing a bird's-eye view of their escape. Left here, quick, through that door. You've got a clear path to the east wing. As they emerge from the building, the sun begins to set, casting long shadows across the landscape. They move quickly, aware that the enemy will soon realize what has happened. As they reach a safe distance, shadow triggers the charges. The explosion is deafening, a plume of smoke and fire rising into the sky, the symbol of their successful mission. The team pauses, watching as their handiwork unfolds. The communications hub, now a smoldering ruin, signifies a significant blow to the enemy's operations. We did it, Shadow says, his voice a mixture of relief and satisfaction. Stryker looks back at the burning remains. This is just the beginning. We've sent a message. Their hold is not unbreakable. As the team regroups, their comms crackle with Phantom's voice. Enemy forces are in disarray. Our diversion worked better than expected, but we should move quickly. They'll regroup soon. Moose, examining the drone feed, nods in agreement. We've got a window, but it's closing fast. We need to exfil now. The team moves swiftly, their exhaustion masked by the adrenaline still coursing through their veins. They traverse the war-torn landscape under the cover of dusk, their movements a symphony of efficiency and purpose. Falcon, ever watchful, keeps her rifle trained on their rear, ensuring no surprises follow them. Area clear for now, but let's not dawdle, she advises. Outback, her spirit undiminished by the day's events, jokes, I could go for a nice cold beer about now. Her comment draws a few tired chuckles, a brief respite from the tension. As they near the extraction point, a sense of cautious relief begins to settle over the group. Nordic, his gaze fixed on the horizon, says, Today we struck a blow, but the war is far from over. Viper, cleaning her weapon, adds, We did more than that. We showed them what happens when you unite the best from around the world. We're a force to be reckoned with. Shadow looks at the stars beginning to appear in the night sky. In this war, victories are hard-earned. Today we earned ours. Stryker, his mind already on their next move, nods in agreement. We'll have more battles ahead. Each of us has a role to play. Today we worked as one. That's how we win this war. The extraction vehicle, a rugged military transport, arrives, its headlights cutting through the darkness. Major Petrov steps out, his face a mask of professionalism, but his eyes betray a hint of pride. Well done, he says simply. You've done Ukraine a great service today. As they board the vehicle, each member of the team carries with them the weight of their actions and the hope of their purpose. The vehicle moves off into the night, leaving behind the smoldering ashes of their victory. In the quiet that follows, each member reflects on the mission, on their comrades, and on the uncertain future. But one thing is clear. Together, 
They are a formidable force, a beacon of hope, in a world shrouded in the shadows of war. As the transport disappears into the night, the first chapter of their story comes to a close, but the war is far from over. The battles ahead will test their resolve, their skills, and their unity. But for now, they have emerged victorious, their spirits unbroken, their resolve unshaken. The night envelops them as they journey on, war-born, shadows of freedom in a world at war. Chapter 2. The Sevastopol Gambit. The brief respite granted to the team is a mere interlude in the relentless tempo of war. The sun rises over a Ukraine still gripped in the throes of conflict, casting its light on a group of warriors who have already etched their mark into the annals of this war. They gather once more in a nondescript building that serves as their temporary base, their wounds bandaged, their spirits as unyielding as ever. Major Anatoly Petrov arrives as the team is restocking and planning. The weight of the new mission is evident in his gait, his face etched with the gravity of what he is about to propose. Your success at the communications hub has not gone unnoticed, he begins, his voice steady. But we have a mission that will require even more from you. It's dangerous, perhaps the most perilous we've considered. Stryker meets Petrov's gaze. We're ready. What's the target? Petrov exhales, the tension in his shoulders palpable. A gathering of high-ranking Russian army officers in Sevastopol, Crimea. Intelligence suggests they're planning a major offensive. Your mission is to eliminate them, disrupt their plans. It's a high-risk operation deep in enemy territory. The team exchanges looks, understanding the enormity of the task. Sevastopol, a heavily fortified seaport and a stronghold of Russian military power, represents a formidable challenge. Viper breaks the silence. Do we have intel on their security measures? Petrov nods. Satellite imagery and intel from local assets. Expect heavy security aerial surveillance, and possibly anti-infiltration measures. Nordic speaks up, his voice firm. We need a solid insertion plan. Going in by land is too risky. Moose suggests a seaborne approach might give us the cover we need. I can get us a submersible drone to navigate the waters undetected. Falcon, examining a map, points to a cove. We could land here move in under the cover of darkness. Shadow adds, local resistance can provide some distraction, but we'll be largely on our own once we're inside the city. Phantom interjects, we'll need to create confusion within their ranks, something to draw their attention. Outback checking her gear says, let's not forget our exit strategy. Getting in is one thing, getting out is another. Petrov nods, we have a safe house set up for extraction, but once the mission is underway, you'll be on a tight clock. We can't afford to have you trapped behind enemy lines. Stryker looks at each member of his team. This is it. We go in, we strike hard, and we get out. We stick together, watch each other's backs. We're war-born. Let's remind them what that means. The team spends the rest of the day planning, each member contributing their expertise to the strategy. The atmosphere is tense but focused, the stakes higher than ever. As night falls, the team embarks on their journey to Crimea. The ride is silent, each member lost in their thoughts, preparing mentally for the challenge ahead. Arriving at the designated cove, Moose deploys the submersible drone, guiding it through the dark waters towards Sevastopol. The drone's silent propulsion and advanced cloaking technology keep them hidden from enemy detection. They reach the shore under the cover of darkness. The city looms ahead, its lights a stark contrast to the dark night. Falcon takes point her sniper rifle ready as they move swiftly and silently through the shadows. As they approach their target, the grandeur of Sevastopol's architecture 
is overshadowed by the heavy presence of military personnel. The team splits into two groups, Striker, Viper and Shadow, moving towards the main building where the officers are meeting, while Nordic, Moose, Outback and Phantom focus on creating diversions and securing their escape route. Striker's group encounters their first obstacle, a checkpoint heavily guarded. Viper, with her expertise in covert operations, silently takes down the guards, allowing them to move forward. Inside, the opulence of the building is a stark contrast to the war outside. They navigate through ornate hallways, relying on Viper's hacking skills to avoid security systems. Meanwhile, Nordic's group sets off a series of explosives in a nearby armory, the sound of the blasts echoing through the city, creating chaos and drawing forces away from their target. Back in the main building, Stryker's group reaches the meeting room. Through the door, they can hear the muffled voices of the Russian officers. They prepare to breach, knowing that the next few moments will determine the success or failure of their mission. The breach is swift and brutal. Gunfire and shouts fill the room as the team engages in a fierce firefight. Striker, Viper, and Shadow move with lethal precision, their training and instincts in perfect synchronization. The Russian officers, caught off guard, scramble for their weapons, but the element of surprise is firmly in the team's favor. Amidst the chaos, Shadow takes a hit to his shoulder, a grimace of pain flashing across his face, but he continues to fire, undeterred. Viper, moving like a wraith, takes down two officers attempting to flee. Streaker, ever the Tatician, covers their flank, ensuring no one escapes or ambushes them. In mere minutes, the room is secured, the high-ranking officers either eliminated or incapacitated. Shadow, clutching his wounded shoulder, plants explosive charges around the room. This will make sure they don't use this place for another meeting, he grunts through the pain. Outside, the diversion created by Nordic's group is causing the desired effect. Confusion reigns, with soldiers rushing towards the armory, leaving other areas less guarded. Phantom uses this opportunity to disrupt communications, further adding to the mayhem. As Stryker's group exits the building, they rendezvous with Nordic's team at the prearranged extraction point. Falcon, from her vantage point, provides cover fire, her shots keeping enemy soldiers at bay. Moose, navigating through the city's chaos, leads them towards the safe house. The streets are a labyrinth of danger, with enemy soldiers on high alert. Outback, ever watchful, spots an enemy patrol ahead. Ambush on the right, she warns, and the team quickly adapts, engaging in a fierce skirmish. In the midst of the firefight, Nordic takes a shot to the leg, his grunt of pain almost lost in the din of battle. Outback swiftly provides cover, her shots precise and deadly, allowing Nordic to hobble to safety. They reach the safe house, a nondescript building that seems abandoned. Inside, Phantom and Viper quickly set up a perimeter defense, while Moose tends to Nordic and Shadow's wounds. The injuries are serious, but not life-threatening. As they wait for the heat to die down, Stryker assesses the mission. We struck a major blow today, but we also made some powerful enemies. We'll need to be even more vigilant. Viper, checking her equipment, nods. We did what we came to do. They'll think twice before gathering like that again. Falcon, peering through the window, keeps watch. We're not out of the woods yet. We need to stay sharp until we're clear of enemy territory. The hours tick by, the tension palpable. As dawn approaches, the team prepares to move. Moose, despite his injury, insists on leading the way. We came together. We leave together, he says firmly. They make their way through the city, now eerily quiet, in the aftermath of the night's events. The streets are littered with the signs of the battle, a stark reminder of the cost of war. Reaching the cove, they find their extraction transport waiting, a silent sentinel in the early morning light. As they board, each member carries with them the weight of the mission, the lives lost, and the unspoken understanding of the sacrifices still to come. 
the transport moves off into the breaking dawn, leaving behind the city of Sevastopol, a place that will forever be etched in their memories. The chapter closes on their solemn journey back, their minds already turning to the next challenge, the next battle in this relentless war. They are war-born, shadows of freedom, and their story is far from over. Chapter 3 Operation Iron Shadow The dawn breaks over Kiev, casting a soft glow on the weary faces of the war-born team. They've barely had time to recuperate from the Sevastopol mission when Major Anatoly Petrov summons them for an urgent briefing. The atmosphere in the room is tense, the stakes higher than ever. Major Petrov wastes no time. We have a situation, he begins, his voice grave. Three Russian freedom fighters, key allies in our cause, have been captured in Rostov-on-Don. They're responsible for significant sabotage operations against Russian military assets. Their execution is imminent. Your mission is to infiltrate Russia, rescue them, and bring them back to Kiev for debriefing. The team exchanges somber glances. This mission is not just dangerous. It's a foray deep into enemy territory, a bold strike at the heart of Russia itself. Stryker steps forward, his resolve clear. Major, what's our intel on their holding facility? Petrov displays satellite images of a high-security prison complex. They're being held here, security is tight, armed guards, surveillance systems, and fortified walls. Infiltration will be extremely difficult. Viper, studying the images, speaks up. We'll need disguises, fake IDs, the works. Blending in is our best shot. Moose, still nursing his leg injury, nods. I can arrange for us to get across the border undetected. We'll pose as a Russian military convoy. Phantom adds, I'll work on creating false orders and clearance. It'll buy us some time inside the facility. Falcon, her eyes scanning the layout, points out, we need a precise extraction plan. Getting in is one thing, getting out with additional personnel is another. Shadow, familiar with the terrain, suggests there's a resistance network in Rostov-on-Don. They can provide us safe houses and local support. Outback chimes in, and I'll make sure we have a solid arsenal, quiet and deadly. The plan takes shape with meticulous precision. Disguises and forged documents are prepared, a route through the Russian border is mapped out, and local contacts in Rostov-on-Don are alerted. Under the cover of night, the team sets out in a convoy of military vehicles, their Russian disguises concealing their true identities. The tension mounts as they cross the border, but their forged documents hold up under scrutiny, and they proceed towards Rostov-on-Don. Arriving at the city, they rendezvous with the local resistance. The safe houses provide a brief respite as they finalize their plan to infiltrate the prison. Phantom's fake orders get them past the initial security checkpoints of the prison. Inside, they split into two teams, Striker, Viper and Shadow head to the cell block where the Freedom Fighters are held, while Nordic, Moose, Outback and Falcon secure the extraction route and stand ready to provide support. Striker's team uses stealth to navigate the prison, neutralizing guards silently as they make their way to the cells. The tension is palpable, each step bringing them closer to their objective and potential discovery. They locate the cells and quickly free the Russian freedom fighters who are stunned but ready to move. We need to get out now, Stryker whispers, leading the way. Meanwhile, Nordic's team encounters unexpected resistance. A patrol stumbles upon them and a firefight erupts. Moose, despite his injury, provides cover fire as Nordic and Outback engage the enemy. Falcon, from a higher vantage point, picks off guards approaching their position. The sound of gunfire puts the prison on high alert. Stryker's team, now with the Freedom Fighters, moves quickly towards the extraction point. Alarms blare, and the prison is in chaos. As they rendezvous with Nordic's team, Phantom's voice crackles over the comms. 
We've got multiple enemy units converging on your location. You need to move fast. The team fights their way through the prison complex, a symphony of precision and lethal efficiency. The Russian freedom fighters, despite their weakened state, keep up, driven by the prospect of freedom. They reach the outer walls, where Moose has arranged for a transport vehicle. Under heavy fire, they pile into the vehicle, Falcon providing covering fire as they make their escape. The streets of Rostov-on-Don are a maze of danger, but Shadow's knowledge of the terrain gives them the edge they need. The local resistance aids in creating diversions, drawing some of the pursuing forces away. As they leave the city behind, the tension begins to ease, but the danger is far from over. The journey back to Kiev is fraught with peril, the team constantly on guard for enemy pursuit. They cross back into Ukraine with their precious cargo, the Russian freedom fighters exhausted but alive. As they reach Kiev, the first light of dawn is breaking, casting a hopeful glow on their successful mission. Back at their base, Major Petrov is waiting. He greets them with a rare smile. You've done the impossible, he says. These freedom fighters have crucial intelligence on Russian military operations. You've not only saved lives, but also given us an advantage in this war. The debriefing is intense. The Russian freedom fighters, though weary, provide valuable information on Russian military strategies, supply routes, and upcoming operations. Their insight is a treasure trove for Ukrainian intelligence. As the team winds down, the reality of their achievement sinks in. They've struck a significant blow against their adversary, venturing into the lion's den and emerging victorious. However, the mission's toll is visible on each of their faces. The physical and mental exhaustion is palpable. Stryker pulls the team together. We did more than just rescue three individuals today. We showed that even the mightiest fortress can be breached. We stood together against overwhelming odds and succeeded. This is a testament to our skill, our courage, and our commitment to this cause. Viper, her usual composure mixed with visible fatigue, adds, We also sent a message to both our allies and our enemies. We're not just fighting, we're prevailing. The team spends the next few days recuperating and preparing for their next assignment. The brief period of rest is filled with maintenance of their gear, tactical discussions, and for some moments of reflection on the war's impact on their lives and the world. Major Petrov calls them in for another briefing. The mood is different this time. The stakes continue to rise. We have new intel, he begins, his tone serious. The Russians are planning a major offensive. We need to disrupt their supply lines to slow them down. This mission will take you to the heart of enemy territory. It's going to be dangerous, but I can't think of a better team for the job. The team listens intently as Petrov outlines the mission. They are to infiltrate a Russian military base in Belgorod, sabotage their supply depots, and gather intelligence on the upcoming offensive. The mission is critical, and the timing is tight. Stryker looks around at his team, a sense of pride swelling within him. We've faced tough odds before. We'll do it again. Let's start planning. We move out in 48 hours. The next two days are a blur of activity. Plans are drawn, contingencies discussed, and equipment prepared. The team works like a well-oiled machine, each member contributing their expertise. As they depart for Belgorod, the air is thick with anticipation. The journey is long and fraught with danger, but they move undetected, their skills honed to perfection. Arriving at the outskirts of Belgorod, they split into two teams. Striker, Viper, and Shadow will infiltrate the base to plant explosives and gather intelligence. Nordic, Moose, Outback, and Falcon will provide overwatch and be ready for a quick extraction. The infiltration is textbook perfect. 
Stryker's team, cloaked in the darkness of night, silently takes down guards and bypasses security systems. They plant explosives at critical points and download data from the base's command center. Meanwhile, Nordic's team, hidden in the surrounding terrain, keeps a vigilant eye. Falcon's sharpshooting skills take out any threat that comes too close, while Moose coordinates their movements with precision. As Stryker's team completes their mission and moves towards the extraction point, the base erupts into chaos. The explosives detonate, setting off a series of secondary explosions. The base is thrown into disarray, its personnel scrambling to respond. The extraction is a fierce race against time. Enemy forces are on high alert, and the team has to fight their way out. Gunfire and shouts fill the air as they make their break for freedom. Nordic's team provides covering fire, their bullets creating a deadly barrier between Stryker's team and their pursuers. Moose limping from his still-healing injury, drives the extraction vehicle with impressive skill, maneuvering through the chaos. As they leave the base behind, the explosion's glow illuminates the night sky, a stark reminder of the war's brutality and the high stakes they face. The journey back is tense but uneventful. They've dealt a significant blow to the enemy, disrupting their supply lines and gathering valuable intelligence. The data they've collected provides insight into the Russian offensive, giving Ukrainian forces a much-needed edge. Back at the base, they debrief with Major Petrov, their faces weary but determined. The intelligence gathered is quickly disseminated to the relevant units, each piece of information a potential lifesaver in the battles to come. The team's success in Belgorod has not gone unnoticed. Their actions have bolstered the morale of Ukrainian forces and sent a clear message to their adversaries. The resolve of those fighting for freedom remains unshaken, and their capabilities are not to be underestimated. As they rest and prepare for their next assignment, there's a sense of camaraderie and purpose stronger than ever among the team members. They've become more than just a unit. They are a family, bound together by shared experiences and a common goal. Major Petrov, in a rare moment of openness, commends them. Your actions have not only saved lives but have also given hope to many. You embody the spirit of what we're fighting for, freedom, resilience, and the unwavering belief in a better future. As the chapter closes, the Warborn team looks ahead, knowing the path before them is fraught with danger and uncertainty. Yet their determination is unyielding, their spirits undimmed. They stand ready to face whatever challenges come their way united in their quest to defend freedom and bring light to the shadows of war. Their story continues, a testament to bravery, skill, and the unbreakable human spirit in the face of adversity. They are war-born, shadows of freedom in a world at war, and their journey is far from over.